Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like the Capitan, giving them all. Just like a million bucks, but yes. things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. They're listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. I say it every day because God been good to me. God has done some things in my life that's been truly been just amazing. It really amazing ain't even really the word. I don't, they don't really have a word for what he's done for me. I'm just out of superlatives. That's why I say it every day. Steve Harvey got a radio show because God is in the blessing business. Yeah, he is. God, God can help you turn your life around. Did you hear me? God can help you turn your life around. Whatever you're going through, God has an answer for it. See, but it's the going through that gets us, though, ain't it? Because I was having a moment yesterday, and I sat my wife down. I said, baby, I just need to talk to you. I'm going through a little bit right now. I just wanted to share, which I'm a little down right now. And my wife reminded me. She just reminded me. Just, see, this what a Man, that's what a, a, a good mate does. A, a, a good mate reminds you just of things that sometimes you forget when you get off track. Because, you know, I, I consider myself a, a motivational type person. I, I try to listen to people and then give them something I've learned along the way on this journey I've been on. I try to give a person a takeaway. But even being that person, sometimes I get off track myself. I get a little, uh, a little low sometimes. You know, I get a little down. Sometimes I, sometimes I forget some of the stuff I say. It ain't that I forget it, I guess. I just get caught up in the grind of doing it. And sometimes I get, I get a little off course and I forget some of the things. And my wife or a mate is, can be good for you to remind you. And she just says, Steve, God got us. She said, have you ever noticed that every time you get in a spot and she say, and I, and I know how you must feel cause you out here working. And, and, and you keep turning around and, 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 and old stuff keep popping up and you get a call from your accountant and hear this then went wrong and that then when you steady trying to fix it, but you steady going, wow, man, what is this? She say, but you ever notice he always, always, no matter what, provide a way and he ain't ever too late. Oh, you might be going, the deadline is approaching. The deadline can come and pass, but then they have a grace period for you. And then sometimes, man, it's just you go down there after the grace period and they take the payment anyway and you're good anyway. So, but see, ain't that God bringing you through it? It may not be when you want it, but he right on time. Just before you get put out, just before they turn. Maybe they cut the lights off, but you get it back on just for company come. 
or just before the weekend get here. See, it, he always comes through for you. And she had to remind me of that. What you going through is necessary. Look, circumstance and hardships and pitfalls are always untimely. If you keep the law of attraction in play, if you keep believing that that's that he going to see you through this, just like he do when you don't believe it. That's what the cold part is, though, ain't it? Ain't God brought you through even when you didn't really have the faith to say he was going to bring you through. But because of grace and mercy, he brought you through anyway. But because you forgot to thank him or you didn't pay attention to the come through, you just was telling people, oh, man, if you'd have seen me, it was so jacked up. Man, I was so turned up. I ain't know what I was going to do. I almost got put out. I was going to see keyword almost. You forgot that part right there. And then, then I was, it looked like I won man. And it seemed like every month I go through this same thing. And then. Now, yeah, then somebody ought to just say, did you pay it? Yeah, I paid it. Did you get put out? No, I'm cool. See, some, see, you need somebody on your shoulder to say that to you. And then you need somebody on, on to come right behind him and go, man, ain't God good. Really, man, that, that's how this works. See, you, you keep getting in situations, but he keep getting you out. Now, if you jump, look, listen to me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's say you in a frying pan in the skillet. And the oil is up and you in there frying and you uncomfortable being fried. God somehow, or let's just say you managed to get out of the hot grease in the frying pan and you standing there next to the skillet, looking at the fire, continue to heat the grease. You get out and then for some unexplainable reason, you dives right on back in there. Ain't that how we usually do it? I'm just asking you. God gets you away from the man you've been asking to get away from. Then you go right back over there and start seeing him again. It's amazing how many times God get us out the fire and we walks right back in there. Ain't it amazing, man? And I mean, really, man, see, this is how I break life down for me. So I don't get over here stuck on stupid with myself and then get to doing something ignorant like blaming God. When really, man, God has given us as human beings the power of decision and we all make decisions. How many times, man? See, sometimes it's a blessing in getting locked up. You can ask a lot of cats. I know, man, to tell you it was a blessing for me, man, because I was just headed the wrong way. Steady. But he locked me up, set me down, made me miss my family, miss being out here being a free man, made me realize that my family was important, made me, man, really see this girl for what she was. When I get out, man, I'm on the straight and narrow. Well, then when you get out, though, see, you can't be talking about, no, oh, man, I can't find no job. Now I'm going to go and do what I got to do. No, no, no. No, no, partner. You got to do now what you supposed to do. See, that don't do what you got to do. Got you in trouble in the first place. See, everybody, see, see, the hood got a lot of ignorant rules we didn't create it. I got to do what I got to do. I got to feed my family. Well, only reason you got to do what you got to do is because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. See, if you just went on to school, like your mama kept telling you. Oh, man, I was watching 48 Hours yesterday, and a dude named Nesto was on there. And Nesto, Latino dude, said, man, my mother told me quit hanging with these guys. They were going nothing but trouble. I should have listened to her. He doing 30 years right now. You can't blame God. That's why I talk to myself this way. So I don't get stupid and start shifting the blame the wrong way when it's really on me. How many times has God got you out of something and you walk right back into it? Man, why don't you take these blessings God give you and go on about your business? That'd be the best way to do it, don't you think? I, that's what I think. So I thank God for my wife for reminding me that God got us anyway, that God going to pull you through anyway, that have you noticed, Steve, we ain't lost a beat. Oh, I know it's hard out here, but really you ain't lost a beat. You still moving forward. You still dressing nice. You still look good when you come into that job. Everybody don't got to know you, your house is in bad shape and all that. God got you, man. If you just hold your head up, man, quit complaining all the time about what you ain't got. And as in words of my daddy, Slick Harvey, stop talking about what you ain't got and take a good look at what you do got. That's improper grammar, but that always stuck with me. And maybe it'll stick with you. Quit talking about it and looking at what you ain't got. Take a good look at what you do got.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I keep saying it, but it, it keep feeling brand new to me. God has done it again. I, I keep getting, I, you know, it seems like I just get more and more amazed at it. I don't. I hope you don't take these days that he keeps giving us for granted. Because, man, it's, it's, it's not a given. You know that, don't you? It's such a blessing to wake up. It's such a blessing to have life. Man, thank you, God. I sure appreciate mine. This is Steve Harvey Morning Show. Get your gratitude together, because if you get your gratitude together, it affects, it affects your attitude. And that has a direct correlation to your altitude. They're called the tubes now. Let's go. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, Jr., and the legend of nephew Tommy. What yeah. is on well, your mind today, Junior? It is more well, well, and more well, uh, intriguing to me. Yeah, you know what, well, Uncle? Uh, you know, uh, Wing got a haircut yesterday, and uh, based mm-hmm. upon everything you've said last few days, cause they listen. Uh, can't you can't you tell I got a hack? You 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 don't see that either. You just gotta bring this up, huh? You can, that's how you. <laughs> now, now I'm, I'm I'm telling you. Anyway, I went to watch barbershop. They said, dog, dog. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to prove to Uncle Steve that you got a hairline. And they edged me up. You can't see it this morning. You don't, you don't see it? Look at me. Look look at me. It just looked the same. <laughs> Sorry, Junior. It's okay. You don't see it today? Today, I got, a, I got a line. Listen you got to see the your line. Barber, your barber has to make you think you have yeah. a line. It's I, just Look at pretty. it. It's there. I'm looking Can dead I- at it. Can I make a can I make a suggestion? Huh? Hold on, wait a minute. You know I don't think he see what we see. Let me take a picture of my screen. What you mean? Take a picture? Why are you doing that? Can I can I make a suggestion? Oh, okay, what what time? What, what time? Junior, if you really want to know what you look like, don't go to that barber for about six weeks. Just let everything grow. Just let everything grow. And and and, and I promise you, in six weeks you're gonna see who Junior really is. Just let let six weeks go. Don't 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 touch it. I don't. Don't touch it. You're going to see sections here and there. Just let six weeks. Everybody look at their phone. <laughs> well, yeah. But we can Everybody see just it. look at their Every phone. Every day no, we I talk about Junior's hair line. I sat there. Every day. I understand what you said. <laughs> Why did you send us Junior, that, Steve? I need you to look at your phone. Oh, y'all look at... Yeah. I need you to look at your phone. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't right. Now, you tell me what you paid him to do. <laughs> Oh, for real? This is what you gonna do? This is no, how you gonna do it. No, no, I just showed it to you. I see. I just, no, you, see, you want us to see what ain't there. What you want <laughs> us to tell you? <laughs> now, dog, dog, now, dog, you bought this up. I didn't bring this up. True. You came in here without the baseball cap on today. Okay. You think you're glowing? I'm. I got a line, huh? I see it. You, <laughs> this you is, should really be. Focusing That's more on really like lotion, is, lotion and That's stuff. Not... Lotion should, lotion whoa, 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 should be whoa, whoa, whoa. what you concern. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. What did you the... just say, Junior? That's not the truth. That's not. That's not. That's, that's not what not I have. Okay. Hey, do me a favor. Turn to the side right now. Just turn to the side. <laughs> we gotta go. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back. Thank you, right after this, you see, say... you see what? Call it shadows. Sir. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Bump and grind. Bump and grind. Yeah, <laughs> we've all done it. Don't act like you haven't. Let's go, cat dog. Bump and grind. Hello? Hello, I'm Tyrese. Uh, Marcus, uh, Marcus. Yeah, this is me. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me pretty good? Yeah, I can hear you, man. Go ahead. Hey, hey listen. Um, let, me turn, let me turn the radio down for a second. Hey, hey, listen. I live in, in uh, I live in an apartment building that you just moved into. Uh, I live in 21A, I, and you live above me uh, in 22A. Uh huh. I actually got your number from the leasing office. I told him I wanted to welcome you to the apartment building, man. But uh, I, I didn't want to really raise no eyebrows. But I was really calling about, you know, you know. First of all, let me go ahead and say welcome to the building, man. I hope that you and your your uh, is that your wife that lives with you. First of all. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. But uh, why would you need to have my number to do that? You could have just came and knocked on my door, man. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, see, what the reason why, I mean, I really called and got the number was 
kind of reach out to you, man. I don't be wanting to start no trouble with nobody or nothing like that. I be wanting to, you know, I want, I want my neighbors to be cool with me, and I want to be cool with my neighbors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's cool. So I, I was reaching out, man, because you know the the noise, man. I was, I'm, um, I work at night and I, I sleep during the day, man. But it seems like since you guys moved in, man, in the middle of the day, it's, it's you know, I, I mean, I, I know what it's like to have a lady. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're hearing noises coming from my place in the middle of the day. Right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hearing. I, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm hearing you making love to your lady, man. I mean. It's, <laughs> Nah, man, nah, nah. You know what it is? You might be hearing something from another another unit, man. It's definitely not coming from us because I'm at work and my, you know, my girl is there, but she's on the computer. You know, she's looking for a gig right now. Hello? Okay, 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 okay wait a minute now. Sir, so you live in apartment 22A, right? Yeah. Okay. See, I live in 21A. Your, your bedroom is above my bedroom. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. You telling me that you hearing noises that sound like somebody making love coming from my crib at this time of day and I'm not there and only my woman is there? Dude, man, you know, I get it. I'm not trying to be rude or anything. I, I appreciate you calling and, and, you know, neighbor and all that. 21 a you said you went, right? Uh, y yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, look, I mean, you called me, all right? So let's get to the bottom of this one time. You saying you hear noise. What kind of noise are you hearing exactly? Tell me. Hey, 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 you know what, man? This is probably just a big mistake. I mean, maybe she's just hanging some pictures or something, bro. I, hey, first, you know what? Let me no, know. No, 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 Hey, hey, man, listen, um, Marcus, I, I apologize. I apologize. I'm, 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 you know, I'm... No, 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 my man, you telling me, I'm a man, you understand what I'm saying? I don't know what you are, but I'm a man. No, I, 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 I understand. You calling me, you calling me, you calling me, telling me you hear a noise coming from my crib that sound like somebody's... And now you telling me don't worry about it, maybe you made a mistake. Hey, hey, man, all I'm saying is maybe it's just a, a legitimate mistake. I don't say maybe she hanging some pictures or moving some furniture or something like that. Ain't no you know, I, pictures, I, man. I keep telling you that. Ain't no pictures. Ain't nobody hanging. It shouldn't be no noise coming from my crib. Oh, hey, man, I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to start no trouble, man. Are oh, you not okay. starting some? Man, all I was calling about was trying to get a decent, decent rest, man. I, I work at night, bro. That's all I'm talking about, man. I'm not trying to. I don't give a if you like the graveyard shit. I don't care. You calling me, telling me about my crib that I just moved into. You hear noises? Ain't no going on like that. Man. I don't even believe it. Don't, I mean, you got the right address. Where you live at, man? You live at crib, man. Yes, man, in apartment 21A, and your place is above mine, man. Hold on, man, hold on, man, hold on. Let me pull this truck over, man. Hold on one second, man. Because you talking to Oh, dude, kid. hey, man, look, I'm not I'm not trying to have no trouble, man. I'm not trying you to have no trouble, man. I do fancy you for working there, dude. I do 50 hours a week, man. I don't need to hear no like this. Okay, okay, dog, I'm not, all I'm saying is, man, I thought... I thought you was making love to your your woman, man. That's what I thought. That's why I called you to ask her to keep the noise down. I ain't making love to my wife. I ain't even in my ass right now. I'm in my ass right now. Trust that. You can hear this 21A. And I'm coming right to your crib to hear it. I ain't hear it from your crib. No, no, hold on. Hold the hell up, dude. You're not coming to my apartment to hear nothing, man. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, 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 you don't know me. I ain't letting you in my house, man, about no man that you got going on upstairs. You got to control your woman, man. That ain't got nothing to do with me. What the f***? I told you nothing about my woman. You don't even know how to me. I know she's been, I know she been out there. I know she's been out there weighing it out for the last two weeks between 12 and 2. I know that. You got to eat. You talking to Daniel, man. I'm coming to your you ain't coming to my apartment, man. I'm not it. Hey, man, listen. Uh -uh, no, I ain't got nothing to do with this. Shit, I'm telling you. You got trouble. I'm coming in your crib, man. Hey, I got I'm one more thing I need to say to you, man. Did you listen? From my crib. I ain't need a home. I got one more thing I need to say, all right? All right? You better you be, listen. You better be telling me you're opening the door. Are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. This is 
good nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your own boy. Wait a minute. Oh, what the? This is you live in 21A, man. Step away from 21A, please. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your boy got me to prank you, man. Oh, Oh, <laughs> damn. Are you at 21, eh? Dude, I'm right outside my apartment, man. I'm ready to blow that thing up, man. What's <laughs> up, you Tommy? Uh, oh, this Tommy, man. How you doing, brother? Oh, man, man, Tommy. You, you had me going, man. I was coming to up, man. I'm serious, man. <laughs> I got one more thing I got to ask you before I let you go, man. What is? What is the baddest radio show in the land, man? Man, it's the Steve Harvey Morning Show, without a doubt. Hey, man, step away from 21A. Step away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. I'll be back in a minute. All right, thank hour. you, nephew. Uh -huh. <laughs> Coming up next. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> As the CLO, our chief love officer. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Beyonce revealed the name of her upcoming country album, and a country music legend weighs in on it. Atlanta didn't stop with the Freaknik uh, documentary. So get ready for the Magic City docu-series, and Wendy Williams' ex-husband is demanding money. What? That's all coming what? up at the top of the hour, but right now it is time to ask the CLO. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Did he not see what we saw on Lifetime? Come on now. Kanisha in Tulsa says, my husband took our four-year-old to his seven-year-old's birthday party at his ex-wife's house. Our son said all of the food was good, way better than mine. I know I can't cook, but I know he's just a child, but I can't let it go. Did he really mean it? He meant it to his soul. <laughs> Children, they, he don't even, he fought. This food right. is good. It's way better than our food. You just said, I know I can't cook. But you thought the baby didn't know. <laughs> See, that's what that's. Baby. <laughs> let me tell you something. When the baby, when a four year old can draw a comparison, uh -huh. you really can't cook. <laughs> what you been giving this child? Oh baby. That poor baby right there. Was good. Well, there you go. There you have it. Did he really mean it? To the core. Yes. See, now once again, you don't want to hear it though. We just went over that with somebody on this show. She can't you you let just it. can't. The denial. <laughs> That's <laughs> real. Ha! Huh? It can't get no more obvious than a four year old telling you. <laughs> they are pretty honest. Yes, they are. <laughs> Baby. All right. That's cool. All right. Moving on. I think we've had enough of that one. Moving on to Celine in Arlington. And let Celine me stop right my... here. And the reason you want to move on because this is about cooking. <laughs> and you can't believe you didn't get drugged into it. But since you said, well, let's just move on like you in a hurry. Shirley can relate to this. <laughs> Shirley baby then came home and told her, the food at the school cafeteria is way better than what we eat. <laughs> mama, the food at Chuck that? E. Cheese is way better than the food. Wow. Hey, mama, when we went to see uncle in the hospital, the food in the hospital was wow. way better. She done heard all this before. <laughs> now nah, go ahead, Shirley. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But This is from Celine in Arlington. Celine says, my sister's husband is cheating on her. My husband showed me the chick, and she's so darn ugly. I can't see how he does it. My husband said that uh, my husband said that ugly women don't nag you, and they're freakier in bed. Does he have an ugly side piece, too? Mm. I don't know why uh. your husband would want to get in there. He's stupid. Because <laughs> uh. he sure know a lot of information about it. So. Uh -huh. That ain't wasn't the smartest thing to do. <laughs> For her husband to say, <sighs> did she tell us? Well, see, side pieces they they don't nag you, and they way more freaky than they. Well, he showed me he have a lot of side piece information. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> he knows a lot. <laughs> he knows the him. rules about <laughs> information too much. <laughs> so she has to draw her own conclusion. What should he have said? Oh well, why he in that? Why did he show you the girl? Mm -hmm. Stupid. 
And did she tell her sister? Does her sister know? Oh, oh, that's a sister. Everybody, everybody stupid. All right, moving on to Venus in Birmingham. Venus says, I have a secret admirer at work that puts treats on my desk daily. I had a security guard check the cameras, and it's the new married guy. I wanted to stop immediately. Should I confront this guy about it or send an email to Human Resources? Wow. Oh, come on now. Damn, why you won't go to Human Resources? She wants it to stop so now. Well, that's what she said. All you got to do is just say, hey, please, I know you're married. I'm not that type of person. I want you to stop or else I'm going to have to report it because I feel uncomfortable. Get to do a chance, man. Damn. What's going to HR for? Oh, yeah. I okay. can't stand HR. I'm about to say, have you been down there before? <laughs> no, Why? Family Feud. Family Feud. I'm down there four or five times a year. And all of it is about a joke I done said in front of one of these families. I did a joke about a certain group the other day last week I got in trouble for. I looked in the audience. Yeah, I didn't back down there. So I went on it. Five and Amazing. Off. That you still get it. You didn't see none in the audience, so you just decided to go better. They was behind the camera. Yeah, they was behind the camera. Oh, Oh, in your eye eye line. Yeah. There was a little family of them behind the camera, so they reported. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right, last one, Steve. This is Frankie and Edison. Frankie says, My wife can't sleep without being right under me. All of a sudden, she likes to cuddle all night, and I'm not in the mood all the time. If I turn away, it hurts her feelings. She doesn't get my hint, so how can I get her to stay on her side of the bed? Yeah, that's Good rough, luck. dog. Good that's luck, rough. buddy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they do that's like it. they want to. <laughs> yep. They do like they want to, because yeah. if that's what they want, and you don't give it to them, then you ain't going to get what you want. So start <laughs> peeing in the bed. That'll get off for you. Start peeing. What? What? That's you your... want to offer you? I'm just. I mean, what? Mm. You want solutions? Nah. Why? If, if you're writing us, what? You want answers? No, 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 no. Not a us. No, no one's writing <laughs> us. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the problem. You keep thinking these people talking to you. Everybody <laughs> say, Dear Tommy, can you help me with Dear any Tommy. damn thing? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Tommy. <laughs> Dear Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> So, you just, Steve, you have any um, hints for this guy so he can bro, get her to stay on her bro, side it's of the bed? Like really ain't, you know. If I were, this is what you should do. When she do that, get up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom, come back, get on her side. Oh, you want her to pee in the bathroom now? Okay, okay, well. Because that's what it's for, the bathroom. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I don't want you to You need your mic off now. <laughs> <laughs> Some level of ignorance that I just now. I'm you had to sit back a little bit. You're frustrating your uncle. This boy right here is so damn stupid. He's serious. <laughs> she, he just wants to know how can he keep his wife on her side of the bed. That's bruh, it. bruh, bruh, bruh. Look, man, we don't have no look when you don't want to, it hurts her feelings. I don't have a solution for you, man. None of us do. We've all dealt with it, and you just got to deal with it. It's called marriage, dog. But he ain't getting no yeah. good night's sleep, though. That's what he's not getting. What's wrong with Hell no. Don't nobody want that all night. We hot. <laughs> it's gets hot. It's we hot. hot. Now you it. hot. Go on. Now you Go on. hot. You're right. <laughs> Damn. Go on. You ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Man, what? He just says uh-uh. he's not in the mood all the time. Yeah, ain't nobody in the mood for that every night. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> no. Nobody. <laughs> Aww. Y'all need a damn teddy bear. Aw, she wants to cuddle with her man. Yeah, she just wants Not to. Not every night, to though. Damn it, I got to go to work. <laughs> she probably has to go, go to, to work. work, too. Well, go to work. Go to sleep. I am sleep. She can Call if she's you. up under you. Here's the problem women don't understand. Your cuddle position is comfortable for you. Now, we got to yes. turn in a, in a direction that we don't want to. Yes. All right. I feel for the brother. Honestly. Coming up Man. next, we'll have some Get entertainment news me. for you. <laughs> Thank you, CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Beyonce revealed the name of her first ever country album on her Instagram page. They posted an image that is believed to be on the cover art 
for the album. The image was of a saddle with metallic accents and a red, white, and blue sash with the words Cowboy Carter written on it. Cowboy Carter is set to be released March 29th and available now to pre-order. Country music icon Dolly Parton gave Beyonce her full support, saying she loves Beyonce. She's beautiful and a great singer. What an endorsement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From the oh legend God. herself. Come on, B. Uh-huh. Come on, B. Man. Come on, H-Town. 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 Cowboy Carter. Love it. Yeah. All right, moving on. Not only will there be a Freak Nick documentary, now there's a Magic City docuseries coming. It uh, debuted oh. at South by Southwest this week. Drake and Jermaine Dupri docu- uh, produced the docuseries Magic City and American Fantasy, and it covers the evolution of Magic City over the years to now becoming the top strip club in the world. Wow, I didn't know that. Magic City and American Fantasy tell the story of the owner, Michael Barney, better known as Mr. Magic, and how he started Magic City back in 1985. We'll keep you posted on the release date because I know you're interested. Now, there's some people in Freak Nick and Magic City. They're going to be in both of them. <laughs> you can double check. <laughs> They thought they were safe. No cameras uh-huh. back then. That's a whole... Yeah, that show sure looked like your auntie, dog. That sure <laughs> so what were you doing in 1985, Steve, since uh, Mr. Magic, Michael Barney, was uh, starting Magic City? October 8th, walked into Hilarity's Comedy Club for the first time in the Comedy Club, $150. What? October 8th, 1985, Tuesday night. Man. Walked into a comedy club, Hilarity's Comedy Club, won $50. Went to work the next day, October 9th, quit my job. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's, that's what you exactly were doing. what I was doing. So you're uh-huh. saying you're not in this docuseries, Magic City? Uh-huh. Is that what you're saying? I didn't have no money for Magic The first time I went to Magic City, Joe Toy took me. Oh. oh. <laughs> After a show in 91. Okay. Joe okay, Toy took six me years in later. 91. How, mm. How, how um or eleven years later? How it was the most um amazing thing I'd ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, how was it? That's I didn't have no money to be in there. <laughs> you couldn't make know. it rain. Make it rain. I wouldn't. Even, it was a light drizzle in there. <laughs> yeah. fact, it was sprinkle. It was just cloudy. It wasn't even overcast. Rain. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean. we'll keep you posted on the release date. And this story has upset a lot of people online. This is according to an exclusive report by The Sun. Wendy Williams' ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, is demanding two years of back payments from the divorce settlement. Court documents claim that their marital settlement agreement payments were suddenly stopped when Wendy was placed under guardianship in 2022, and he wants the payments to be resumed. According to the documents, Kevin Hunter stated that he relies on the money for his living expenses and not getting the money for 23 months has greatly affected him. Hunter stated that he's met with Wendy's appointed guardian, but he still has not been paid. This did not sit well, needless to say, with Wendy's fans or anyone who knows how uh, Kevin Hunter and Wendy Williams' marriage ended. Fans started bashing Hunter for having the audacity to ask for Wendy's money, and they advised Hunter to, quote, get a job. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Get a job. Didn't yeah. he have another baby? This man had a whole family. A whole uh-huh. yeah. down, down the, the street. street. Down the yeah. street. Uh-huh. And this woman is sick. Yeah. And you so we want... supposed to take care of your house down the street? What? <laughs> yeah. Bye. Come on. Bye. Bye. Right. <laughs> I just, you know what, man? I... <laughs> Just as a man, some form of compassion. Yes. For what just another that? human being. Yeah. The mother of your son. Yes. That. Look, yeah. you ain't got to move back in. You ain't got to be in love. But just some form of compassion. Just as a man. Yeah. I'm just not that way. You would never hear me. I'm, first, I'm not ass. I'm not begging nobody for nothing. No, nothing. At all. Nothing. You'll just get, get another job, Steve. I'm not awesome. fitting to ask you for nothing. Yeah. I'm yeah. not fitting to lower myself. Mm-hmm. He says he relies on the money for his living expenses and not getting the money for almost two years has greatly affected him. So your ass is just sat there. <laughs> it affected what her when you cheated and had a whole yeah, family a, since we talking yeah. about what affected. Well, the woman's not doing <laughs> well. I mean, how about She's that? She's ill. Yeah. She's the woman is just not doing well, man. Yes. Come on. 
A dog. Ugh. And, Stop. you know, they're the guardianship and all of this stuff, you know, come on. She doesn't even have access to her own money. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. The hustle, yeah, baby. You got to get your hustle on, man. Yeah, get a job. All like people too. said in the comments, get a uh, job. Get a job. That was his hustle. Um, so he feels that he's part of her success and her career. Yeah. So I've heard that before. Oh, <laughs> have you really? Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Hey, man, do you know how many people made me? You know how many people are responsible for my success? Well, you know I how many people too, sit up sure. and just talk about how they're responsible for the empire, the branding, all of that? There's people out there claiming that about me. Man, please. Uh -huh. Wow. Man. If you have the ability to make a person, to turn a person into a brand, to a create star. a star, if you have that ability, if I were you, make, I would make, make me. Myself. Yeah, make oh, myself. Samoa. That's right. That's right. Bruh, I would just go make me. Instead of yeah. finding somebody else turn into a star, you see, you have that ability, make yourself. All right. Oh, make Coming up in 20 stuff. minutes after the yeah, hour, Donald just Trump, make has, yourself. <laughs> Donald Trump has revealed what he plans to do on his first day as president if he's reelected. We'll talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. As if the world needed another reason to not support Donald Trump for president, here's one more. Trump has stated that if he is reelected, his first order of business will be to pardon all of the people that were convicted of crimes related to the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. Right there. Mm -hmm. Right there. Mm -hmm. uh, he also that promises... That pretty much says he, yeah. has, he thought it was consent. Yeah. Like, that's, that's crazy. Okay, there's more. He also promises to seal the U.S. border on his Truth Social website. Trump wrote, quote, my first act as your next president will be to close the border, drill, baby, drill, and free the January 6 hostages being wrongly imprisoned. In response to Trump's statement, his written statement, a spokesperson for the Biden campaign said, Donald Trump has shown he'll do whatever it takes to hold on to power, including excusing and encouraging political violence. If Why you would you pardon him, somebody who participated in a riot, but the reason you want to pardon them is because they participated on a riot on your behalf? For you. Yeah, yeah. for you. That's it. This so these people... They listened to what you said. They went into a federal building to try to harm Congress people, mm -hmm. destroy their property in their office, kill people, kill Capitol Police officers in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. This is and you're gonna pardon them. Yeah, this is the decision that they made to do and carried out. Okay. Well, that's what and he they did. They tried to overthrow the government. They agreed with you to overthrow the government. Yeah. And, and I mean, it makes perfect sense to us. Why would you do that? But there are still people who know this that still will vote for him. They, they're they ignoring this. And, and that's the problem. You exactly. know what he did. That's the sickness of our country. Yeah. That's the real that's the real America we live in. Uh, you know, but come on now. We're dealing with a nation from the get go. How this how America was born was off off of off of thievery and theft. Mm -hmm. Murder. You took everything from those Native Americans to survive. Mm -hmm. You learned how to live. They taught you how to live. They taught you how to trap. They taught you how to feed yourself. They taught you how to plant corn. They taught you all this here. Then you took them and you moved them to a reservation and then told them they were savages. They weren't savages when they saving your ragged ass life. Huh. It's the same man. If you look at this, bro, I, I yeah, y'all ain't know nothing when y'all came over here. Y'all ain't know nothing. <laughs> they ain't nothing. And then they always <laughs> talking about who over here being this. How y'all get over here? It ain't yours. You did the same thing to the Asian Americans. The Chinese were building the railroads. You brought all these black people over here to build. Black people built this nation, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. This is For all free. because of the For backs free. of black people. <laughs> The moment somebody ain't like you, they don't belong here. But how'd your ass get over here? They sent the worst of the worst over here on them boats, and then y'all build a nation. Man, please. And then, them, 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 them Native Americans should have left y'all where they was at. I ain't trying. <laughs> please register and vote. Uh, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, 
Uh, we're going to switch gears and bring Roscoe in because he is waiting in the wings right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Carla, your buddy Roscoe is here. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> <laughs> right here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, anyway, my whole show is dedicated to the truck driver that don't like none of Steve's character. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't bother you one bit, huh, Rod? We don't give a damn about him. Drive your truck. Stay safe, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be you. Keep your eye on the road, not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Hey, hey Roscoe. Roscoe. Hey, Roscoe. Hey, Roscoe. Yeah. Roscoe. Let's let's yeah. get this thing jumping. So it seems like the new uh-huh. trend, country music, country album. Beyonce's about to drop her album, Cowboy Carter. What I figure, come on, it ain't gonna happen. What? It ain't gonna happen no way. Pick it up. What I figure, <laughs> come here, get it come ain't on. gonna happen. Uh-huh. Hey. It just ain't going down no way. <laughs> yeah, that ain't nothing new to me. I've been writing country so oh, You well, got to yeah. know when to hold them. What? Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Uh-huh. Know nope. when to run. You never count your money. Sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting when the day we done. You trying to say you wrote that? I ain't trying to say nothing I wrote. I thought that was, was it Kenny Rogers? Kenny Rogers. You always think it wrong. You always think it wrong. (laughs) But for real though, Kenny Rogers though. Come on now, Roscoe. Give credit where credit Kenny is. Kenny Rogers. I know Kenny. How you, oh, you okay. do? Okay. I, I knew I knew I knew I knew Kenny Daddy. Oh, who was his what daddy? What was his name? Roy Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> Since we do it country. <laughs> now how country is that? You can't get no more country than Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. What else you got, baby? What well, that was it. I was just wanting to talk to you about country to see if you have been in the studio if you're thinking about dropping a country album. You well, to- you know, I wrote so many country songs. I just- Dolly Parton is uh, giving Beyonce her blessings. I think Beyonce yeah, is going to yeah. remake her song, Jolene, yeah. on this yeah, new Jolene. album. I think that's what? my Dolly. Jolene. Yeah, I don't know about all that right there. You know, I used to holler at Dolly, though. <laughs> Did you not? What? Talk to me, player. Oh, Roscoe, you oh, and Dolly oh, were... Oh, you can holler at Dolly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though? <laughs> Working nine to five, yeah, I, I, I'm sure was. <laughs> 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 you know, I don't never, I don't never, uh, you you know, kiss and tell. You ain't never heard Rocco do that. Yeah, you've always yeah. been a gentleman. Been right? it, yeah, always exactly. been a gentleman. I'm just saying we used to holler. That's all That's I'm saying. It. I ain't saying nothing about Miss Parton. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine woman, classy, everything right here. Yeah, you know, I like Dolly Parton. You know my name. Wow. All right. Yeah. Well, she do together. like black people, though. That's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> who who yeah. she like black people? She does. I yeah. will always love you. You know, she yeah. wrote that. And Whitney Houston, she gave no, me. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. What? I wrote that. <laughs> Uh, you what? know I always love you. Uh, I wrote that. See, Dolly. Oh, let me say. She gave it to Whitney, but she wrote it for me. I told you I used to holler at her. <laughs> I will always love you. Come on, is right about now. you. About Dolly Parton wrote that about me. Oh, because you all used to kick yeah, it back. Yeah, in the yeah day. I used to kick it. And, and so, then she said, "Well, damn." Then so she went on and gave it to Whitney. But and it, did you know when Whitney was singing it that it was for you? Hell yeah, because I had talked to Thelma about it. Who's Thelma? Whitney yeah. on. Thelma Houston. Is that what you <laughs> say? Thelma Houston. <laughs> Whitney Mama. No. What is the confusion here? Stop yeah, we're all confused. I know way more about this than y'all know. I mean, I've been in a holly. Come on, I told Thelma about it. Thelma knew. <laughs> Sissy, what are you talking about? That's what. That's why me and Thelma broke up. Oh, God. Wait, wait, wait. Dolly. Coming up next, the nephew and 
today's oh, no. prank phone well, call. Well, Rocco been on me for a long time, baby. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter. And the subject is, I don't think my husband likes black women. Um, we'll get into that and find out why and what's that's all about. <laughs> Everything, okay, and a little later. Yeah. <laughs> what? Your husband, though? All right. But first, uh, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for his nephew today? This right here, Shirley, this is called Triple Casket. Triple. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see let me, let me explain it to y'all real quick. We've had three people pass in the family. Okay. You understand? Three people have passed. But what we would like to do, if possible, is get a custom casket where all three of them can fit in that war. <laughs> How you understand what I'm saying? You have lost yeah. your entire... Triple K. I mean, the funeral on the same day, we might well have gone on <laughs> laid in the rest together. You see what I'm saying? That's sad. Yeah. What? what do you want us to say? Ooh, that's genius. I want you better, the you better believe it. Day. Yes, I do. Why is the yes, funeral I... on the same day? Why? Why? That's Everybody had their own day? I, I'm sorry. Yes, well, their own well, this is how we doing it on here. We triple cask. Let's go. Come on, cat. <laughs> <laughs> Jenkins Mortuary. This is Calvin. How may I help you? Hey, how you doing? You, you say right. Calvin, right? Yes, sir. Uh, hey, Calvin, how you doing? My name is Brandon, man, or uh, Brandon Giles. I, um, okay. I'm I'm calling. Uh, we've got somebody that uh, has passed, actually, uh, uh, three people. Well, I'm sorry passed lost, away. Um, yeah, well, well, you, I thank you for that, man. It was kind of expected. Uh, right. So, you know, it, it wasn't something that caught us off guard. But, right. you know, but all in all, you know, we're still grieving about uh, losing our loved ones. But uh, but I, I wanted to give you all a call. We, we're trying to... um. Pick a particular funeral home on who we want to um, uh, right. take care Family of. Family services. Yes, okay. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, um, uh, we can definitely help you with that. And um, uh, once again, I just want to, you know, just let you know that we can pretty much do the whole gambit. We we can make sure that your needs are taken from you know from from now on. Um, okay. We're here for you. Just wanted to get that out. Okay. Uh, what is your main need? Uh, you, you said three people, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. To, uh, okay. I wanted to okay. bring uh, attention to you. Do you guys customize uh, caskets? Yes, we okay. do gold plating, uh, engraving. Uh, uh, we no, we no, even no, have no, a new no, thing no. where we can put uh, the picture of the person on the outside, like a, a semi-gloss uh, coating. Okay. We have a couple options. Yeah, yeah I, I, don't, I don't need that. I don't know gold or nothing like that. Listen, okay. listen, what I want to do, is, is there any way that you could maybe uh, customize a casket that can accommodate three people? Um, uh, yes, like a, we, we, we can we can customize each individual casket for each individual no, uh, no, family no, member. No, 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 Calvin, that ain't what I'm asking. What I'm saying is if I, I want to, like, like, I, like I say, these my cousins, they was all close, it, you know, I don't have a problem with all three of them being in the same casket. Uh, I get you. Um, uh, to, you know, to my knowledge, as, as far as I've been in this business, uh, I've never, uh, I, I'm not really sure we can actually do that. I mean, I yeah, mean, let me, let me what, what, I mean but what's the problem? If we can get them all in there and close well, the lid. Well, before, well sir, I mean, I think that's a, I, I, I don't even think if for one, it's legal in this state or any state. Uh, three people in one casket, um, and ethics-wise, I, 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 uh, that's not really something that uh, how can I say that we actually, you know, push. But for. if you customize in a casket, Calvin, then you ought to be able to put as many mm. people in there. If you make it deep enough and wide enough, mm. ought to be able well, to get three people in there, right? Well, the customization is 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 the outer side of the casket, and maybe you know some people. Uh, even put TV screens on the inside, or some of their their, their loved ones' uh, memorable uh, mementos. Uh, we customize it for that, you know, color wise, uh, size. Uh, so what about when when it's a person um, real big, uh, you know, a heavy set person? You know, you got to have a casket that can accommodate them, right? Uh, yes, but it, okay. So again, so you ought to be able to put person. you ought to be able to put three people in one casket if they can fit. Uh, I'm, if I'm, you put two one way and one the other way, 
sir. Then you ought to be able to have all three of them in there at one time. Um, is there anybody else around you and your family that can help talk uh, with me about this? I'm talking to you right now. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to accommodate my cousins and get them straight. And I'm asking you, can we get them in a casket that one casket that can accommodate three people? If you put two pillows on one end, one pillow. That's not. That's not something we're 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 really. uh, That ain't something your is used to doing, Cal. But I'm calling you, telling you that's the way I want this customized, man. All right, all right, brother. Look, brother, brother. Just just chill out with cousins. All right. So we're trying to get three people. Sir. Yes. I have a standard plan. It, it'd be a low-end standard plan for three individual caskets. That's all I. We call. ain't got. A, we don't have enough money for three individual caskets. I keep telling you that we got room well, for one like casket. We we just need the yeah, big enough, man, that? so you could get everybody in there and close the door. So, I, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. I don't want to go back and forth with you, sir. I know this is a time. Of, then go. Of then three. you ain't got to go back and forth with me. It's build build a that I need so I can bury my family. I, I don't really know what to tell you, sir, but I'm just really trying to help. I'm trying to Won't help you. Won't you tell me you're going to get three people in the casket looking because good? We can't two, do that. Two. We cannot do that. Who the f*** you hollering at, man? So, I'm the one going through bereavement. I understand that, but you are, you're, 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 you're using foul language. It, it's just, we can't do it, brother. You hear me? Like, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's, no, 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 that's no, no, hold on. No, my no, cousin no, them sir, said they wanted to use the right to refuse. No, sir. No, we can't do okay, it. Okay, look, can't help I'm, I, look, man, hey, man, y'all going to bury these three people, and you going to put all three of them in the same so damn you casket, me, now, man. Now two I, two on, one way, on one end and one on the other one, man. Sir, if you're drinking, okay. just stop. I'm, ain't nobody drinking. Let me tell you something, man. Let me say this to you. Yes, what, your name sir. Calvin, right? Yes, yes, it is, sir. Okay, Calvin so Calvin, Calvin, let me say this to you. Either y'all going to bury... My cousin's the way I want it, or Calvin, you're going to get your ass whooped. Who are you talking to? That's what's going to happen. Now, 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 that's it right there, sir. I've been trying to be as professional as I can. This whole conversation is as crazy as it is. But now. Ain't nothing crazy me. about it. No, 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 no. You I told you I want you to bury my cousin. Come on down here. I got some places to put your body and your cousin's body. How about that, huh? Oh, oh you talking about doing oh, something mean? Yeah, because you obviously. Oh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't sound you too damn confident. You don't sound too confident, Calvin. I, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. This ain't the place, and I'm not the one. You will be in the ground messing with us. Matter of fact, if you come here, I'm going to f*** you up. How about that? Okay, Calvin. Okay, Calvin. Let me tell you something, Calvin. Me and Tommy going to be down there to date in. I'm bringing Tommy with me. Who the f*** is Tommy, huh? <laughs> this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. You just got pranked, Calvin. This some b- <laughs> Yo, y'all had me ready to whip somebody. <laughs> y'all, I just want to know who put you up to this. Reginald that works Reggie. at the, uh, yes. I'm going to whip Reggie. <laughs> you better watch what you drink. You better watch what you eat. I'm on your <laughs> to revenge, Red. <laughs> hey, Calvin, give me this, man. What's the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Man, you know it's nothing but the Steve Harvey morning show. Y'all, y'all got me. Y'all got me, man. Y'all got me. <laughs> and there you have it. The triple oh. cast. Okay. Oh, still, in, still in Richmond, Virginia. Sold out all weekend, man. Y'all get ready for a good time. Had a great time last night. Um, laying in the cut. You already know Montgomery, Alabama. That is March the 30th. And then I got to tell y'all about April Fool's. Comedy Jam. Oh, my Should God. Day. Star s- star studded. April Fool's Comedy Jam. You got Lonnie Love. You got Coco Brown. You got D.L. Hewlett. You got Bruce Bruce. You got Nephew Tommy. Oh, my God. You got Tracy Morgan. You got it, The list goes on and on and on and on. I'll tell y'all more about it. But that's the April Fool's Comedy Jam at the Barclays <laughs> in New York City. Okay? You, that is your what? day. What, 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 what? Day. <laughs> All right. Oh, coming my. up next, Strawberry Letter for today. I don't think my husband... Likes black women. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is now time for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com. And we will um, get your letter. And we could be reading it live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. 
Thank you, nephew. Subject, I don't think my husband likes black women. Dear Stephen hmm. Shirley, I'm 40 ah. years old. <laughs> yeah. 40 years old and married to an older man. He's an entrepreneur, and I'm in the insurance field. He's out and about rubbing elbows with big wigs every day. At least that's how he describes his line of work. He dabbles in real estate, and he owns a few parking lots, and he just acquired another one. When he's at home, he's asleep or he's on his computer. We used to cook at home together and watch movies. That was our thing. But over the, the holidays... He said that lying around watching movies is a waste of my time and a waste of my time when I could be spending the time working on myself. He suggested that I get a hobby like playing tennis or golfing. I rolled my eyes when he said it because I'm not interested in sports. He told me it was just like a black woman to cop an attitude and roll my eyes. Lately, he's made remarks about me not being driven or having ambition. He said it's a cultural thing and black women like to settle. I've been at my job for 22 years. I can retire in eight years. I love what I do and I don't want to be self-employed. Saturday he asked when I was getting my braids taken out and getting a more professional hairstyle. He said if it's not braids it's a weave. You and these hairstyles. He's also said my behind is nice now, but as I get older, I might want to start working out so it doesn't spread. I usually ignore him, but I went off that day, and he said he expected me to react that way because black women are so reactive. I think he's got something against black women, or maybe it's me. I don't feel comfortable at home anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is going on with him? Wow. Uh <laughs> Well, you know what? I, I say this. When a person lets you know who they are, believe them, okay? He's shown you who he is and how he feels about you and black women. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's who he is now. The one thing that a person should never do is compare their partner to someone else. And, and he's being so nasty about it, too. Just because you're not doing what he wants you to do and how he wants you to do it, now all of a sudden, Something is wrong with you. Now you have an attitude or you're an angry black woman. It's one thing to get those type of stereotypes from others, but not from your own, especially your husband. Come on. You should be angry and hurt. It's okay that you went off on him uh, by the way he's talking to you now. All these comments about it being a cultural thing and just like black women to do this or that and about your braids, they're mean. They're insensitive. It sounds like he's out and about now. Like he said, he's meeting new people, women especially, and he's changed as people often do in relationships. And he thinks the grass is greener now on the other side just because he's out now. Uh, you say... You usually ignore him, but I say to you, don't ignore him this time. If you think you need to start taking better care of yourself, handle that. Take from it what you need and discard the rest, but do it for you. Do it for you, not for him. Steve? Well, I don't know how we keep dancing around this big white elephant in this room, but I can't. <laughs> I don't know what the hell we talking about here because, I, you know, ain't nobody mentioned a race in this letter except for the fact that you said, I don't think my husband like black women. Well, let's wait a minute. Where did that come from? Why would you just, I don't like my husband likes black women. Now, I read the whole letter and you never once mentioned who your husband was. So now what you've done for me is you've allowed me to open up the door of speculation. I am free to now read into this letter what I want to read into it and read in between the lines. Now you ain't saying nothing in this letter about your husband being black and you did not mention that your husband was white. But he got white dude wrote all over him in this letter. Now nah, you done married a white dude now you done discovered he don't like your black ass. Oh, here we go. No, no, I said, no, 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 Shirley, ain't no need looking at me on your Zoom. You had your turn. <laughs> I ain't nobody going to say nothing about this letter but me. I'm here for it. Let's begin. I'm 40 years old and married to an older man. He's an entrepreneur. I'm in the insurance field. He's out and about rubbing elbows with big wigs every day. At least that's how he describes his line of work. He dabbles in real estate. He owns a few parking lots and just acquired another one. When he's at home, he sleep on his computer. He sleep on his computer. We used to cook at home together and watch movies. That was our thing. But over the holidays, he said, lying around watching movies. Here we go. 
is a waste of time when I could be spending that time working on myself. Here is a husband. You did not say how long you all were married, but it's gotten to the point where something is starting to happen. He suggested that I get a hobby like playing tennis or golfing. That ain't a black request. No, sir. No, sir. Very few black men come in the house and go, you need to pick up a hobby like tennis or golfing. First of all, I don't want my wife to play golf. That's the one place I go where I can get away from everybody for four, five hours. And I don't want her up there playing no damn golf. Steve, where my ball? How I do this? How I swing that? Well, I need some more balls. Let me use your club. My club's too long for you, baby. We're not going to do that. So here was the first inkling that you could be married to a white dude. He suggested that you go play tennis or, or golf. Now, it's a lot of blacks that play tennis and golf, so I don't want to make you think that. Lots of black tennis players, good ones too, a lot of good black golfers. I play golf. I'm not a good one, but I play. <laughs> uh, after Hang that, on, we'll Steve. come back and I'll tell you what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Coming up at 23 minutes after the hour, uh, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We'll have part two of this strawberry letter. The subject is, I don't think my husband likes black women right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is, I don't think my husband likes black women. Now, for this woman to say this, y'all, and then not tell us whether her husband was black, white, Latino, anything like that. It All it leaves is a letter of speculation. So all I could do is dig into it my way and read between the lines. Now, they, they've, uh, they don't watch TV no more and movies and cook together. So now, uh, over the holidays, he told her, you could be better spending your time working on yourself. Okay, so somebody's getting disgruntled know, where he's out dabbling and working out in the field, like you say, and now he's starting to meet some different kind of people, I think. He suggested I get a hobby like playing tennis or golfing. A lot of black people play tennis. A lot of people play golf. The uh, Black Enterprise Golf and Tennis Classic used to be one of my favorite events to attend. I used to love going down there, hanging out with them bougie-ass black people. I really did, man, because they was all in too. corporate America. Everybody knew. But they asked me not to come back down there one time. I said <laughs> Um, at American Airlines event that didn't go really, really Back well. Back to the letter. Thank you. Uh, it, this is about the letter. <laughs> this is about the Black Enterprise Golf and Tennis Club, which was excellent. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. Anyway. Brother Earl Graves and his vision was outstanding oh, for that. Miss him dearly. Anyway, uh, then you said, said, I'm not interested in support. Then he said, he told me it was just like a black woman to cop an attitude and roll my eyes. You should have said, oh, like your mama. Uh, But then you didn't say that because his mama white. mm. See, there are no comebacks in this letter. There are no snappy comebacks. That's why I'm thinking the lady is thrown off because she married, she thought she married a well-rounded person that didn't see race or color. But it's starting to show up in this letter. Lately, he's made remarks about me not being driven and having ambition. He said it's a cultural thing and black women like to settle. Uh, what black woman are you talking about, though? Because that ain't who I'd have met. They, they some of the hardest scrappers and hustlers I've ever met in my life. Black women? You talk about somebody that can pick up the ball and run with it. You talk about somebody that know how to hold it down. You know how somebody you know how somebody know how to put it all together and make it work. That's black women. Yes, sir. Now all of a sudden, his thing is, it's just like a black woman cop attitude and roll away. And then he said it's a cultural thing. Black women like to settle. Ah, that's a cultural thing. I'm getting confused in this letter. I've been on my job 22 years. I could retire in eight. I love what I do, and I don't want to be self-employed. Saturday, he asked if I was getting my braids taken out and getting a more professional hairstyle. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you went down there and saw the little movie Barbie, huh? Mm. All right. <laughs> oh, now you want long, straight hair. Okay. He said, if it's not braids, it's a weave. You and these hairstyles. He's also said my behind is nice now, but as I get older, I might want to start working out so it don't spread. I usually ignore him, but I went off that day, and he said he expected me to react that way because black women are so reactive. I don't understand this letter. I just really, really don't. I don't really give a damn if your husband, black or white. I don't like him. I don't like you sitting there talking about it. But what, Shirley? Don't you think if he was white, she would have said that, though? That's what I think. 
you but know. see, now, nah, but, but okay, but well, no, not necessarily. Mm. I would think she would say he was white, but she didn't. Yeah. But then she says, I don't think my husband liked black women. He got a mama and he married you. So I'm, I'm a little stuck on this. Mm. But I'm, I'm but thinking it's something else to this letter. Mm. I really am. That's what I think. We don't know if we got a white letter. I think he's got letter. something against black women, or maybe it's me. See, that's what makes me. I think he got something against black women, or maybe it's just me. I, I see. It just sounds like I don't feel comfortable at home anymore. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what made me think it's white dude at that. Uh, I don't so feel wild. comfortable at home anymore because the only way this can work is one of these two things. All I can gather from this letter is this right here. That she's either tired, he's tired of her. Yes, uh, that's what it yes. sounds like for sure. Or, <clears throat> or in uh-huh. his business, his line of work, he's been running around meeting all types of these new yes. people. And now he's saying, wow, what I got at the house ain't all that after all. He's comparing you get his rid of them braids. Right. Your yes. body going to spread. Exactly. You know, I like, your Why hair. You, take your yeah, you know, maybe you're going that route. Yeah. But I really don't care, y'all, if he black or white. Right. Mm-hmm. If you married the white dude, now nah, now nah, nah his true colors then came out. And if you married a black dude, leave him. <laughs> what? Because he's real Hollywood with it. Yeah. He, he, he's you brand know, new. I mean, but I'm leaving the white dude or the black dude. It just don't yeah. sound like this is a relationship you need to stay. It just, like, like, like your butt is okay right now, but as you get older, it may spread. Yeah, it's but she's right. It doesn't sound like he likes black women, black or white. It doesn't matter. It doesn't sound like this man likes her anymore or well, black women as a whole. all of his statements are anti-black. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden you came to this? Mm. Uh, see, I don't really know if it's a black dude or a white dude, but I know I you don't need to be with him. Yeah. 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 Amen to that. <laughs> 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 my whole blood. All right. Thank you, Steve. Put my, put my butt in a box. Kiss it. Don't miss a corner. <laughs> Leave your comments <laughs> on today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM. And check us out on the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app where free never sounded so good. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Sports Talk with Junior. What you got, Junior? <laughs> Free agency is here. The face of the NFL is changing, man. Derrick Henry signs a two-year deal worth $20 million with the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, That's my big. God. Super Bowl. Big, baby. That's what mm. I was thinking, Uncle Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry. Super Bowl. Odell Beckham Jr., Ooh. Who got the ball? Mm. Lamar. 20 me. Man. Lamar got the ball. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen, man. It's, it's like having two running backs in the backfield for Baltimore right now. They got it. They got it. They, they got to be favored to go to the Super Bowl. <clears throat> uh, also, uh, you know, Cleveland, you know, uh, mm, I don't <laughs> know how to tell you, Unc, but uh, y'all lost Joe Flacco. Yup. <laughs> Joe Flacco no, go. No, 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 no. He's going to the Colts. Going to the coach. Y'all lost your flat. But y'all did pick up somebody though. Jameson was Not not just Jameson. Hmm. Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy Who's from Jerry? Broncos. From Denver, Denver, Denver Broncos. Wide receiver. Wide that. receiver. That bad yeah. boy cold. But how you feel about the Browns now? Browns is good, man. We Watson. Good. Same home. Amari Cooper. Jerry Judy. Nick Chubb. Y'all, y'all gotta line up. I ain't gonna give if, you, I ain't gonna if, lie. If Chubb, if Chubb can get healthy, he had a bad, bad injury. I was hoping we picked up Derrick Henry. Cause I don't know if he's gonna be able to come back from that injury, man. That was nasty. Everybody wanted Henry. Yeah, everybody wanted Henry. Um, we're not getting it. You know, everybody but, but uh, the Titans. Yeah, <laughs> that's the stupidest thing <laughs> right. to do. To let him go. <laughs> Carry the whole team. But New York gonna pay for letting uh, Saquon go. Yeah, they are. Pay and them. he went right over to Philly. Rivalry team. Giants will be going nowhere this year. (laughs) (laughs) What they dumbass was thinking. Big blue. The Giants is put all their money on Daniel Jones. They put all their money on Daniel Jones. Wow. (laughs) It's all good though. Hey, you know what? Uh, In Chicago, Justin Fields could be a backup this year because he has not been traded. Has not been dealt. We killed it for him. Was Kirk Cousins going to the Atlanta Falcons? 
This is where for him to go now. So he could be well, the backup. What you mean? Ain't nowhere for him to go. Back up what, to what, who? What, what, Caleb Williams from USC. Dog, yeah. hold up, man. Let, let me slow everybody down. Everybody keep picking these boys out of college thinking they all finna come in here and do what y'all's boy did in Houston. Ain't nobody did what this boy did in Houston except the boy in Houston. <laughs> CJ Stroud. <laughs> yeah. Dog, ain't nobody did in the NFL that whole draft where they had yeah. Rosen, Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen. Josh Allen was the cream of the crop in that group. Yeah. This Caleb Able Williams one. dude, he all right in college, but man. <laughs> All right, Junior. <laughs> All right, thank you, Junior. Coming up at the top of the hour, can a man that's used to having threesomes ever be happy being monogamous? That is the question for you, Steve, when we come back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This is from Sandy in Flint. Sandy says, my boyfriend and I met three years ago, and we had casual sex with no strings attached at first. During that time, we had threesomes, and I allowed him to film some of our experiences. When he asked me to be his girl, I put all of that in the past. We've been monogamous for a full year, but now he's asking to bring another woman into our bedroom. He told me in the beginning that he got all of the freaky lifestyle stuff out of his system. Is is he a lost cause? Can he be monogamous? No. Mm. What? I wouldn't. Steve. I wouldn't be monogamous. No. Nope. <laughs> Wow. Too much was, in his um, head. You know, he, he, he needs some more legs in there. He needs more <laughs> options. He got to keep touching. He got too many free hands. He wants some stuff happening to him while it's happening to you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-mm. No. And so that's how y'all started. It. You know, you know, you went long with yeah. it. Yeah. You know, good luck, lady. I don't know what to tell you. Bring them on in. So he is a lost cause, you're saying. He I mean, I don't know. He just, just told you what he wanted. Uh-huh. Now, if you don't give it to him, he ain't going to stop wanting it. He so Keisha somewhere. and LaDonna can't come over. Yeah. Uh, That's what you're yeah. saying. No, he, he, he's, he's, no, no, no. He's, he's, he's not going to do right. That's not what he does. He, 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 he did it for a little he, while. Uh, that's what she told. That's what no, he did. Year. It she did, whole year. He did it for a little while with her. He yeah. 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 For a whole oh. year, she said. Yeah. With yeah. her. Please stop. Yeah, Shirley. we've been monogamous. We've been monogamous Shirley. for a full year. Shirley. You understand. Uh-huh. Do you not understand what we said? What is this you not understand? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you he what the woman wrote. He didn't win and three somewhere else, Shirley, but he three. <laughs> He don't, he don't, he don't want to do it unless it's three said. people. <laughs> if it ain't three people, he ain't going to do it. <laughs> now he wants to bring someone else in. She said, Wait, we've been, been, yeah, he he been doing it. Day one. Uh-huh. All right, we have another one. So you, you don't think there's any hope for this guy? Look at the film. You see how he be acting? <laughs> he feels it. Hell, You're yelling. Hell, we keep talking about this for. <laughs> that's right, him. To- In the film, that's him. Look at him. <laughs> but a whole year, they were good. Sure. His question is, <laughs> sure, his question is, it's just you? <laughs> He right. he got up, when he got up out the bed and hit the button on the camera, did you see how fast he was back in the frame? <laughs> <laughs> he was right back. So there's no hope for this guy. All right. We have time for one more. This one's from Yushin in Dover. Yushin. I'm in love with another man's wife. It started out as a business deal. I am 13 years younger than she is, and she was paying me for sex. I ended up leaving my wife for her, but she broke her promise, and she's still married. If she calls, she expects me to drop everything to be with her. I can't date other women because she'll cut me off. I've tried to leave a few times, but I get sucked back in. I have a good job now, so I want I want to move you, on with my life. <laughs> Be quiet. Stop. <laughs> That's so obvious. Uh, I want to move in. I want to move on with my life, but I can't imagine never making love to her again. Will she ever leave him for me? Bro, no. No. No, now you're learning what women learn. You know, this, you just got it reversed on you. Sides can't become mains. You slaw, cutlet fries, wow. you baked beans, you dirty rice. You ain't finna be the chicken. 
you not fit to be the chicken. You the mac and cheese. You that little watery ass, soupy ass mashed potato with that little white gravy they put on there. You the side, dog. You not fit to be the chicken. Quit crying. <laughs> Go on with your life. What you talking about? I can't. She won't let me see nobody else. How she know? <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, oh, none of this. Huh? Hell, you. A... But how All does right. she know you seeing somebody else? How then when she, she called, you supposed to drop everything up. You been dropping everything. Margaret, I'm right. coming over there. I, uh... <laughs> no, All right. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we will have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Tommy, today's Friday. Tell us what's happening. I'm ready to love. Ready Getting to love, baby. Now. Getting down to the nitty gritty. Y'all Ooh, tune yeah. in. We are still in Dallas. And let me say this. I am excited because I did get the phone call that there will be more ready to love to come. And it feels good to get that phone call. And I'm yes. 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 congratulations. Yes. I can't reveal the cities yet, but we got two cities laying in the cut. So ready to love will be back again. I'm still holding strong. And on Saturdays. Hey, man, BCQ, Black College Quiz, is kicking butt, man. They are liking it all over the country. Black College Quiz, where I'm hosting a bunch of HBCU students that are uh, competing for scholarship money. With them. Man, you want to talk oh, about some God. knowledge and wisdom on black history? These kids off the chain, man. Could and you be trust on me, I know the question. I know the questions. Tommy don't know all the answers. They know. I'm about to ask you. <laughs> Could you be on there, Tommy? Could you no. do it? No. <laughs> Check out Black College Quiz. It's on the different different markets. It's on different networks. So you might yeah. be on NBC on this one, ABC on that one. On Check your local. So on and so on. But mm-hmm. Tune in and check your boy out. BCQ, Black College Quiz, man. Saturdays. Get your knowledge and wisdom on of the African-American history. Yeah. Black Mother excellence, huh? Yeah. Watching these students yeah. shine. Yeah. Man, and congratulations. I'm ready to love. There will there are more to come. I love that, too. More to you come. You can't drop Uh-oh. a hint on the city. Up north. Ooh. That near Chicago. 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 <laughs> oh, they're going to Chicago. Oh, yeah. I, I, That's going to be I good. I didn't say that. I said I north. <laughs> I, <laughs> all right. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour. We'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to play a round of Would You Rather. When you're having dental work, would you rather local anesthesia or would you rather be completely, totally knocked out? Hammer, Be. smash, <laughs> knock, <Be>. out. <laughs> out. Out. All the way. Gone. Yeah. The shot, the Wake gas. up, don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> All of Junior. It. <laughs> yeah, knocked out. Everybody. Oh, okay. All right. Agree Wasn't clear. This fool can't stay up and take no more pain. You got to <laughs> <laughs> Knock me out. <laughs> All right. Hey, when you're aroused. Ask you a question. This is a oh. Uh-oh. Let me stop. What'd you say, Shirley? <laughs> I stopped you in mid-sentence. Yeah. All right. You when say? you're aroused, oh. would you rather drool uncontrollably, drool uncontrollably, or would you rather sweat all over your body. Which one? So are we drooling or are we sweating? A and, a and B. Yeah. Yeah. I do both of them already. <laughs> a and both. B. Yeah. I'm drooling and sweating at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Steve. I'm going to go with drool, though. Mm-mm. Drool? Yeah. Yeah. A slobber, Shirley. Yes. Yes. All that. Mm-hmm. Pecan. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> All day, all day had some yesterday. They were delicious. It don't um, make me no damn difference. Just as long as I'm aroused, I don't. Really <laughs> get that. I don't really get that. Yeah. All right. Would you rather go barefoot everywhere, just everywhere you're barefoot, okay? Or would you rather wear Trump's gold tennis sneakers, his shoes? Oh man, don't do me like that. Okay. Oh well, Eric well, Benet, here I come. Uh, barefoot. <laughs> You barefoot. Now, I'm going to put them damn shoes on because I can't go in no public bathroom barefoot. I can't. Nah, <laughs> think about what you got to do. I can't do Man, I be watching people. They be at the pool area Ooh. and they'll go in them restrooms barefoot, walk right in there and walk back out. I can't. It's Because if you've ever been in a man's bathroom. It's nasty. It's nasty. nasty. It's nasty. Man, it's... I'll just what go what bathroom are nasty too? I know they are, but man, yeah. men... No, now, the tree is right working. there, dog. No. Who is this that's <laughs> find it right on the floor? Remember uh, RF, RFK Jr. on the plane walking around barefoot? Remember that? 
Uh-huh. Is he walking around barefooted while he campaigned? I didn't know he was walking around. <laughs> no, but on the plane he was, and everybody was like, ew. <laughs> Hell, All right. Wow. <sighs> okay, that's today's round of Would You Rather. Uh, <laughs> coming up in 49 minutes. Your Would You Rathers was bad today. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe you guys just sucked. How about no, that? No, 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 no. See, but I no, saw you uh-uh. trying to, uh, try to, try to take a deep breath like we ain't do that good. Uh-huh. With ragged uh-huh. ass question. <laughs> <laughs> You guys you know, suck today. But you all know right, what? Coming we up get tired of trying after. to make something out of nothing all the damn time. <laughs> coming up at 49 minutes after the hour, Steve will close out the show right Would after Would you this. rather breathe or hold your breath? <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Last break of the day, last break of the week. Um, Steve? Yes. What are you going to leave uh-huh. us with today? Well... Here's the deal. You know, we were talking about the, uh, you all read the Wendy Williams story and her ex-husband is, wants back pay and money and all like this. And it just got me to thinking about who we are. I'm just talking to men right now. Um, I feel really, really comfortable speaking about manhood because that's what I am. Uh, I'm an expert at manhood. I'm not an expert at your situation. I'm not an expert at your set of circumstances. I'm not an expert in your house or your marriage. I said, I'm an expert at manhood. You can't tell me nothing about being a man. Nothing. You you can't teach me no new principles of it. You, you, You can't tell me how I ought to be. I got a lock on that as do millions of other men, as do millions of men who are listening to me. So see, I'm not saying I'm the only one, but once you're a man and once you're a full grown man, you got a lock on that because it's real simple. It's really, really simple what we have to do. The mistake we made was we were so busy climbing the corporate ladder, so busy being a beneficiary of affirmative action so busy trying to earn our keep that we forgot to teach the two generations behind us. And now we have the problem that we have today. And that's why I have a mentoring program because I'm trying to go back and catch them at an earlier age to try to instill some of the principles of manhood to them. Do you understand this about us as men? We have two major obligations when it comes to women. Two, that we have to do. We have to provide for them and we have to protect them. Those two are an absolute must. They are non-negotiable. You don't get off the hook from this. When you have children, you have to protect them and provide for them. You don't get off the hook. There are no exceptions. There are no exceptions to the rule. There are no set of circumstances that you can pray. Well, I ran up on hard times. Got it. I understand that. When you get off them hard times, your job is to protect and provide. When you have a woman, your job is to protect and provide. Period. That's the deal. And I'm sorry, man, but you just don't get away from those two things. Now, those are the non-negotiables. Now, you can have, you know, you can have some, you can have some other uh, qualities Like, it'd be great if you were a great communicator. It would be great if you were a great lover. It would be great if you were a great uh, 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 caregiver. It would be great if you were really, really great at sharing. Oh, that's good. But I got news for you. You, Two things is just not up for bargaining. Protection and provision. That you have to do. I don't know where these young guys and got off at it, and excuse me for sounding old-fashioned, I really don't give a damn how you feel about me. I know the rules, man, and because you don't know the rules, I'm not going to stop knowing the rules just because your ass has set up a new set of them. You go into all these women talking about what she bring to the table. Hey, man, if your focus was on what you brought to the table, what she brought to the table can, can be limited. You understand? But, but if you find a good woman, what they're going to bring to the table is so much more that you can't bring. Women are one of the greatest additives in the world, man. I don't know where we done got off thinking that we the prize all of a sudden. I don't know where women done got off at giving man that title. 
the Bible says when a man findeth a wife, he has found a good thing. Because you know why? Because God knew that in order for a man to be all he could be, he was going to need a her. You got to have a her, man. They the real deal. They the missing elements. They do things we can't do. See, all those two things that we supposed to be uh, shoe-ins at, protection and provision, well, that other stuff, man, they got a lock on that. Nurturing, caring, giving, sharing, supporting, loyal, loving, kind, tender. They remember everything. They don't forget nothing. They know everybody's birthdays. They remember all the attitudes. They take care of families. They, They do all of that, man. It comes with a good woman. But you so busy, man, trying to find somebody that can take care of you when it's your damn job to take care of her. I don't know how we got away from this. I don't know how we didn't teach it right. But I'm here to tell you now, Uncle Steve is about the business of that. You have got to those do those two things. That's what you are as a man. If a woman has the responsibility of bringing all human life into this world, do you understand the magnitude of that? That women are the only ones that can make a human life. That's huge, man. You are here because of some woman somewhere. We all are in here because of some woman somewhere. Don't you understand that, brothers? So when you're talking about what they bring to the table, that's a pretty big brain, don't you think? Seeing as how you wouldn't be here if somebody didn't didn't have that brain, let's just be real. So quit tripping with women so hard. Get your sugar honey iced tea together, man, and be a damn man. You were made to take care of somebody's daughter. That's your damn job. And I'm sorry, I don't feel that way. Oh, man, man up, dog, because that is your job. That's your role in this whole thing. That's the deal, man. I'm sorry. So if anybody told it to you, now you know. So get to providing and get to protecting somebody's daughter somewhere. If you don't, you ain't living out your creed, and that ain't my fault. Have a nice day, y'all. See you tomorrow. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 